Hey everyone, it's Byron again to testify for Jesus Christ. I was riding along this afternoon with my wife. We were cruising out just to check out a sunset. Um, and as I was doing so, I, I was just re reminded of the dreams that she's had uh, and the things that, the dreams she's had that have rhymed with dreams that I've had. Uh, of late, and well, I, I've done a lot of videos of late about uh, warning people, we're going to be here for some trouble. Not we're going to be raptured any minute, but we're going to be here for some troubles. Uh, I've been doing those type videos for four or five years, but of late, stuff really got on my nerves. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to share some dreams that my wife had. And I want to um, use some scripture that show you, if you spend a little time with the scriptures, you'll see that uh, Christians do go through tribulation, and they go through... Um, tribulation from the Lord. I want to read first, um, before I get into her dreams, I want to read first from uh, Psalm 89. Now this is going to be several verses, but where you hear the word him, uh, it's speaking of Jesus Christ. Uh, in, in Psalm, uh, the, the whole Psalm talks about David and his descendants, uh, and then talks about Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus being a descendant of David. Uh, the scepter will never depart from from uh, the, the tribe of, of Judah. Anyway, <clears throat> um, Psalm 89, I'm going to start at 24. And this is God speaking. But my faith, faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also in the sea, and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my father, my God, the rock of my salvation. Also, I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. This is still talking about Jesus. It says, My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed, now this is talking about us, the seed of Jesus Christ. His seed also will I make to endure forever. And his throne as the days of heaven. That right there is shouting music, you know. Uh, but there's something about this that he, he, there's a stipulation here. Listen to the stipulation. Um, if his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statue and keep not my commandments. I just did a video about keeping commandments and, and um, whether we do it by uh, like our willpower or by the Spirit of God. Okay? Anyway, if his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgment, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. There's some tribulation, bro. <laughs> um, nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. So, um, his children, will his covenant that he's made will last forever. Um, he will not break the covenant. But if there's people that have um, transgressed, they will be visited by the rod, rod and their iniquity with stripes. I've already been visited for my transgressions, man. And I, and I hope that you know, he got my attention good enough um, that I'm not going to have issues going forward in the future. But I read that because many people, because of hyper grace and because of certain teachings, many people don't understand that God still deals with us as he, a father does with children. And he's going to deal with us the way he has to deal with us. Okay. That scripture is showing you that God's not going to break his covenant, but he is going to get some folks corrected. Okay. Now, the United States is Mystery Babylon. This is leading into why what the dreams that my wife's had. The United States is Mystery Babylon. Um, the Lord has shown me that, many other people that. Okay. I want to read here in Isaiah 47 that the Lord was he was angry with his people and he turned them over to Babylon's hands. Now listen to this. It says, uh, Isaiah 47, verse 1. 
Come down and sit into dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. So if you had a Babylon at one time, the daughter of Babylon would be a descendant of Babylon. And I, I say mystery Babylon. Uh, we're the descendant of Babylon. We're, you know, we people say when we were the, the biggest superpower on earth, we pretty much run the earth. We've been the hammer of the earth. We are the daughter of Babylon, a descendant of Babylon, and we are here. And it says, sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. When you hear tender and delicate, basically we're a, we're a country that's less than 300 years old. Brand new country. Uh, take the millstones and grind meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover thy thigh. Pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. Basically, Babylon, you got problems coming, okay? But it's not just the problem that's with Babylon and what all that's happened with Babylon. Listen to this. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. Then the Lord makes this statement. This is very important. He states, I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance. I gave them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy. Upon the ancient hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. And thou said, I shall be a lady forever so that thou didst not lay these things to thine heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. This right here is scripture showing you that the Lord was angry with his people, and he's going to visit the transgressions of the Christian church here in the United States. You got, you got folks preaching prosperity gospels. You got folks um, Basically saying, just live and let live and do do whatever you want to and then go to church on Sunday, meet the country, the country club church. Everything's fine. You know, it, you got folks committing fornication with the world while staying in church, etc. God is very angry with this situation. And judgment begins in the house of the Lord. He says right here, I was wroth of my people. I polluted my inheritance and given them into thine hand. Giving them into Mr. Babylon's hand. Your own country is going to deal with Christians. Then God's going to deal with the country. Okay? That's what it's saying. One more thing. Jeremiah 5150. For those of you that, you know, you really think that, you know, there's some, some trials that's going to happen with Christians. And I'm when I go through my wife's dreams, you're going to see. Um, Jeremiah 5150. It's talking about Babylon once again. You can go check me up. See if it's not talking about Babylon. Anyway, it states, Ye that have escaped the sword, go away, stand not still, remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. The sword is coming to the United States. If this statement, and I believe it is, if it's talking directly to Christians who escaped the sword, that, the sword, sorry, the sword that, that could very possibly be talking about the open door similar to the Church of Philadelphia in Revelation. But there's some people that are not going to be captured by this mystery Babylon, this United States, um, etc. And I'm not, I'm sitting there thinking of all kinds of dreams I've had, but I want to I share my wife's dream now. I've laid the background and showed you in scripture where this is prophesied. Now I want to talk, talk to you about my wife. First and foremost, the first dream she ever had, she and I were walking through a neighborhood here in the town that I live in, but this was back in, she had this dream in 2008. We actually left town. One of the reasons is because of this. And there was a man that just came out. This was a dream. But there was a man that just came out right out of his house with a pistol and just started shooting at us for what we thought was no reason whatsoever. The amazing thing about it is at the time of the dream, <laughs> in the dream, I was able to take the gun away from him and disarm him as he was shooting at us. The Lord's going to be with some people through what's coming. I believe that was an indication, one, of a literal situation where God can cause people's uh, weapons to fail when they're pointed at his children that he decides to protect. 
or two that could be signifying some spiritual warfare and that gun could be somebody kind of like hurling fiery darts from Satan you know whatever the case was I disarmed him and I praise God for that okay that was one dream I'll try to see which one of these is the next one and the next one was we were at our we lived in Baton Rouge Louisiana following when we left here went there lived over there for about eight nine years and came back uh, we were in Baton Rouge Louisiana and she said Byron we were in the parking lot sitting in a van about three to four white vans showed up they looked like floral delivery vans and people were getting out of those vans and going to our apartment to get us but we were in a van already in the parking lot and we drove away as they were looking for us at our apartment and as we drove away we passed a presidential motorcade and I truly believe that's the I truly believe that there was a presidential order given uh, to get us because we were Christian and we escaped now I want to go back Isaiah 47 6 I was wroth with my people and I have polluted my inheritance and given them into thine hand thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancients of days thou hast heavily laid thy yoke we're talking about a time and I can rhyme this with other my dream we're talking about a time here in the United States that Christians will be rounded up I have actually seen in dreams Christian persecution inside of stadiums with people I knew watching as it was happening. All right, Isaiah, Jeremiah 51 50, once again, ye that have escaped the sword, go away, stand not still, remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. Last dream I'm going to share from her. There's one other dream if I can remember it after I finish this, I'm going to tell you from mine. Um, we were walking through a wilderness area. She knew it to be California. Uh, as we were going to where we were needed to be, she said the clouds were very low, but she could hear a jet and saw the President um, Air Force One fly by. She could see the presidential seal on the side of the aircraft. She could hear foreign soldier voices. And we were evading the foreign soldier voices. And then we ended up getting to a building. And in the building, there was many, many people and in individual locations throughout the building where people were being given shots in their arms. And she saw Jason Alexander. He played on this place thing called Seinfeld. He was a little short dude. I forgot his name. Um, she saw him there getting a shot. He had this horrible look on his face. And she said, when I saw that he was being given that shot, I knew that if he took that shot, he was going to die. He may not die immediately, but he was going to die. And then she woke up. The last thing I want to say, and there's, there's many other dreams. I got them here on YouTube and stuff like that. The last thing I want to say is talking about the ye who have escaped the sword, stand not still, remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. Um, Men are so many, I, I keep thinking of them as I'm just sitting here. But there was one where I was north of Decatur, Alabama. I saw a train of Russian soldiers come by me as I was standing there. Shortly after the Russian soldiers passed, I saw a train load of actors come and stop and get off right there with me. I think that was signifying after the invasion, there's going to be people in the wilderness who have escaped the sword. And these actors got off. And I have learned actors. I have learned that these actors, um, th these some, some of the characteristics of actors. One is right now they think they understand what's going on. They, they're the type that tell you every video, we're going to be raptured any minute. They're truly children of God, but they've been led astray. And right now their heads are very big. They, they can't understand. They can't read scripture and see what it says. Uh, but some of them will be spared through this. And they will go out into the wilderness. And some people, as my wife and I have been shown, will be given responsibility to teach them uh, the truth of the gospel and what, what maybe, how they may have erred. And that is during this part that says, Ye have escaped the sword, stand not still. I mean, go away and stand not still. Remember, Lord, far off and let Jerusalem come to your mind. Mystery Babylon. The United States is going to deal with Christians, and then it's going to be dealt with itself. So it's coming, man. It's coming.
Now, my whole purpose behind this was to let people know it's time to be very serious. It's time to be the soldier that we're called to be. Each of us possibly are at different stages in the game, different levels and all that stuff. And then even if we're not at different levels, each of us have a different job to perform. Somebody may have the job of praying like some people have. They're, they're almost their whole job. They've, they've said, all right, I've been praying. This one lady said, I've been praying for you for two years that you'll have the boldness to do what you need to do. And she didn't even, she didn't even know me when she started praying for me. My wife showed her a picture of us together, and then the lady just started crying. She said, I, so I've been praying for your husband for two years, that he'll be bold. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm sorry, but I could go. I could keep on going. I got a lot of videos on here, and I keep rambling and all that stuff. Anyway, what I'm just trying to say is this is not the time to stand around and choose the lazy fair, uh, easy way, etc. This is time to turn on the burners. Mature in Christ. Be ready for what's coming. Um, and, and, and the point that I was making, um, each of us may be at a different level of maturity, but then again, it, it may be irrelevant. Each of us could be having different jobs within the body of Christ, where one is um, exalting, bringing people along, doing exhortations. Uh, one is rebuking, and one is dealing with folks that, say uh, false teaching and one is praying one is uh, having other gifts um, and we, we have to just all perform our job within the body and how God or Jesus leads us he's the head and he can make this body of Christ work beautifully if we're doing um, what we're called to do there's scripture that talks about the perfect will of God to know the perfect will of God I know the perfect will of God for my life I just hope that I'm able to completely and totally perform it. And I know I can because of his spirit that lives within me. I just got to, you know, there's a scripture that says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is something. Um, the flesh will hold us back. And so anyway, that's my wife's dreams. That's some, some scripture from the Old Testament that show you um, God deals with his people. He dealt with Israel in this manner. And he's going to deal with uh, Christians in this manner as well. He's not going to break his covenant. He's not going to uh, turn around and say, okay, therefore, since you have done these crazy, stupid things, you're no longer Christian. You know, but he's going to deal with you. And, and, and one of the reasons for dealing with a person, if you're truly a child of God, one of the reasons for him dealing with you as a father is to bring you back into repentance, you know? Not let you go off all stupid and, and stay stupid until you pass away. You know, he's going to bring you back to repentance. Man. And repentance may be a couple seconds before the guilt team falls, man. But, dude, we got a job. We're chosen by God. Chosen, called and chosen. We got a job performing. You can see from these scriptures, man, it, it's not all rosy. But it's the job we're called to do, so. I'll let you go. See you.